Hello and welcome. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful in the studio today. If you're joining me for the very first time, welcome. I hope that if you enjoy this video and feel inspired that you'll give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future videos. So if you've been following me along on this journey, I've been having so much fun. Thank you to everybody who's been watching and leaving comments for me. So that's been very helpful. So what I've been working on, if you haven't been watching or if you're just finding me for the first time, I gave myself a challenge to do a journal completely out of recycled book page. When I started this challenge for myself, I didn't know what style, what theme, anything about what I was gonna do. I just knew that I wanted to challenge myself to be creative and come up with some new ideas. So what I ended up with, somebody had asked if I would do a journal again, a video on the stacked envelope junk journal. So I thought, well, perfect. I'll just use that as my format because I didn't know what I was gonna do anyway. So one of the very first videos, I show how to put together this uh, journal, a junk journal, and it's used a file folder and six recycled envelopes. So I went ahead, because I didn't know what I was doing uh, for theme, I just went ahead and covered everything in book page. And that way I can go from there and decorate. Since then, I did come up with an idea and decided I wanted to do a really bright color, um, kind of a mixed media style, bohemian exotic travel journal. And so that's what my theme is, and that's given me so many more ideas. So I've kind of been bouncing around uh, when I was stuck at the beginning, I started by just making a bunch of mixed media paper because I wasn't using decorative papers. And I have videos where I show kind of how I approached this. And I've been having so much fun just doodling on them. And I'm going to do some slow stitching and that kind of thing. So I've started making that. Um, and then I just started jumping in with my prompt list of things that would go with travel, like a passport. Um, I did a scrapbook for, you know, the things you collect on your travels and all kinds of stuff. So there are all videos on everything I've done so far. In the passport video, I hinted that I had another idea and I've decided to break it into three videos. So I've already done one. The very last video before this one um, shows you how to make faux leather out of book page. And we need that for the next two, at least two projects. So what my idea was, <clears throat> in case you didn't watch that passport one yet, is I thought about a luggage tag, um, how fun it would be to make uh, leather out of book page. I'm trying to find different ways to manipulate the book page so that you don't know that's what I'm using. So the mixed media paper was one idea. I've done scrapbook paper, um, the black scrapbook paper out of a book page. And there's a video on that. I did my passport with with writable paper, and then I wanted to do leather. So I, as I was thinking about where I was gonna put this leather tag in my journal, I, I thought <clears throat> it should go on the outside, like it goes on the outside of your luggage. So then it gave me the idea that maybe instead of this being like a book, I make this like a piece of luggage. So I'm gonna do that, that's my plan. I haven't uh, made a pattern yet or anything for that, but I have an idea in my head. So I thought rather than be overwhelmed by this project, I would start with the leather and a luggage tag. So today I'm gonna show you how I made the luggage tag, and then the next video will hopefully be the carpet bag inspired um, luggage that I'm gonna put on the back. And then I can attach this. I'm not sure how, but it'll be there. So today we're gonna do the luggage tag. So if you want to do this with me, Watch the video just before, and then you can make a luggage tag with me. So the other actually idea before I get too far um, that I had is I had done a lot of experimenting. So I've got multiple luggage tags going. Um, and each time I would do something, I, I would think I needed to do something else a little different to make it better. So I'm gonna have several things finished just because of this, doing this video. And I'm thinking, in everything I'm doing, I've got leftovers, you know, more beads that I'm not gonna use. I'll end up with leftover paper. So I think what I'm gonna do, 
I do a, a drawing on my Facebook page at the first of every month. So I'll put a link to my Facebook page. If you wanna go follow me there, then you can, anytime you uh, comment, share, like anything all month long, no matter how many times, I put your name in a drawing and then I do it at the end of the month. So I thought not everybody does Facebook. So for my YouTube channel, I thought it'd be fun for this project is at the end of this project, I'm gonna have lots of bits and pieces um, and I'm gonna bundle them up in like just a little collection, a little grab bag kind of thing. And I don't know how many I'll end up with, but I can put like the quotes that I put in the, in the you know, sticker quotes and just all kinds of stuff that I have. So I thought I'll do that. And then if you comment on my, on any of the videos, and it can be ones that I've already done in this series, all the comments from this series, I'm gonna put in a drawing and at the end, I'll do a drawing and depending on how many bags I have, um, I'll send them out. So um, watch the videos, co comment, and you'll get your name in the drawing. So that was my other idea. Okay, so to make a luggage tag, the first thing that I wanna do is I have my leather uh, that I made out of the paper and I want the strap, I guess I should show you this. So this is gonna be the design. So. It's based off of a luggage tag where it's leather and then there's a little window that opens up and that's where you see the address and name of who the luggage belongs to. And I decided to make mine like a little swivel thing and it's writable on the back side, so it's kind of like a little journal card. And then instead of putting the address, I made it decorative, but when you take it out, it's actually writable on the back side. That holds it in from anyone stealing it. And then you can either put like this journal belongs to, or you know use it as a journal card. And then I still have something cute um, in the window. I've put, my passport book has quotes all about travel in there on every page. And so I took one of those, this one says, not all those who wander are lost. I thought that was funny for a piece of luggage. So I put that quote in there. So this is the tag we're gonna make today. Okay, so the first thing that we need are parts. We need the strap, and I decided that I liked the strap just being um, two layers of this and not any thicker because it kept it a little more pliable. This is gonna get wear and tear on it. You see just in the times that I've been taking it out is it cracks like old leather does. And what I've been doing is just going back with my ink and kind of you know fixing that. If a paper tears up, then I've just been gluing it back down kind of thing. But it looks like old cracked leather. So, I mean, it's made out of paper, you know, it doesn't, my husband asked if he could actually use this because he thought it looked real, um, but it won't be durable enough to put on your luggage. So to make the strap, I'm gonna cut two strips of this before I make it thicker. So I'm gonna make them just about half an inch wide in the entire length of this paper. Now this paper um, that I'm using is a little bigger than the other book pages I've been using. This one is about um, five and a half by eight. And you, you, you can do one tag out of one page. So I think five by seven would still work because we do have some scrap left over. So I've just cut two half inch strips and I'm just going to glue those together with my Mod Podge and that's going to be my start of my belt. Okay, so then this part I need to um, reinforce. I want it to be thicker because it's going to be my pocket. So the first thing I want to do is just add a piece of book page to it. And I want to, it to have print on it because I'm gonna see it through my window. Now, if you're not gonna do this challenge, but you wanna do this tag, if you want, whatever you wanna see through the window, that's what you should put on the back of this. So if you are using decorative paper, then you wanna put um, this piece to be decorative, face up, and that's what you're gonna see through your window. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I've used Mod Podge. If you watched the, the leather making video, you know that I've used um, Mod Podge on mine. And I say this all the time, I live in a dry climate, so Mod Podge is what I use. Not everybody likes it. Um, so if you're in a more humid climate, I understand that uh, Collage Podge works better. So that's at Hobby Lobby, I guess. So just use whatever uh, clear drying decoupage glue that you use to make the leather. And then that's what I'm using to 
adhere my paper because normally I would be using glue stick to do two pieces together, um, but I've already used Mod Podge and glue stick doesn't work as well um, next to it. So I'm just gonna use a brayer and get all my wrinkles out. So if you've watched the videos in this series, you will know that I have been using iron an iron to dry out my uh, my papers when I put them together with glue stick. This is a little different because you have um, Mod Podge on this side too, and it'll stick. So what I've been doing um, is I use my iron, but I've been, I'm gonna grab my thing here. I've been using my iron, but I put a piece of scrim down first to protect my ironing board. And then I put the glue side down and then you can iron over that. I don't really need to do it for this. Actually, I think this piece has glue on it. I don't really need to do it for this, um, but I'm gonna show you in case you, in case you do need to. So this is just a piece of scrim. You can use some ga something gauzy, just not something with lint, because it, it, it could stick to your, um, to your project. So I'm going on this because this is clean, but if it wasn't, I would put a protective piece. And then I just, I don't wanna do it very hot. I've got it between wool and silk, but that just kind of dries that out. Now you don't really need to do this, um, like I said, this step but it helps stiffen this up as you're you know, working on if you need it to be. Sometimes it's a little hard when these are, are too flimsy for this step. When you're making the leather, if you watch that video, I mentioned you do want it to stay pliable, but now this is the part that's gonna be a tag. So I want it to be sturdy. Okay, so now that I have that kind of made uh, reinforced, I'm gonna bring this back over. And I need a good straight line since I didn't get this straight on my, this line was straight. So I'm gonna see if I can cut back on that again. Okay, I'm just gonna use this edge. So I don't have a, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, turn this really straight. I don't have a die cutter. If you have a die cutter and you've made window tags before, then that's what I would use. But I don't have that, so I'm gonna use a punch. Okay. So I'm just gonna use a tag punch. Mine's about two and three quarters. And I'm gonna start a little ways from the edge because I wanna be able to trim it exactly how I, the size I want. I'm just gonna punch a tag. And then I know I want them four inches tall. So I am going to um, flip it around here. Actually, I need another straight edge. I'm gonna do it at, at four inches. And then I wanted about half an inch on either side of my opening because that's about what I have here. So I'm just gonna line up this inside edge at my half inch mark and trim that. And then flip it around and do the other side. Same thing, just line up that inside edge of the tag cutout at half an inch. Make sure I'm straight. Okay, and then this is already four inches, so now I just need to cut it to the width. Which is about right there. Okay, so I have those two pieces and my tag. Piece. And the other thing that I need to cut out, which actually I should have done it when I did the skinny, these skinny pieces for the strap. I always forget this part. This is why I have so many made. I could use this piece, um, 
but I need the little, this little part that goes around that captures the end of the belt buckle, the belt. So I need that little strip. I just eyeball the size, like this would be enough of it probably. No, nah, maybe not. I need it to uh, be doubled like the belt will be, but then I also need it to be big enough around that I can capture that, and that will be big enough. Okay, so that piece, that'll work for that. So I need this little strip, and I should tell you how long that is, just so you'll know. So this is about four inches. It was a strip from the height, four inches, and then it's probably like three-eighths or something. A quarter, yeah, three-eighths for that. Okay, so this one was half an inch by the entire length, which in my case was eight inches by, so eight, half, half inch by eight inches and three eighths by four inches, okay? And this is, you know, like I said, yours could be a little bit different, but that's just what I've ended up with. Okay, so then the other thing I need to do, cut one more piece, is I made mine writable on the other side. So I just cut, um, and a piece from, it's just a single sheet of a book page that has gesso on one side. That's just to make that writable. So I'm just gonna punch that out too. Okay, so those are all my parts and pieces. I'm gonna set those aside because I have some already kind of started. It'll make this easier. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to uh, round my corners. I've already done that. I used my We Are Memory Keepers. I used the middle one, which is seven millimeter. You can use any size you want. I just kind of like that. I thought it made it look like the leather tag. So do the corners, both of the pieces. And then for mine, because my leather is pretty dark, I used uh, Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Walnut Stain to go around my edges. And I do that first because otherwise I forget to do it and then I start sewing or putting things together and then I haven't done it. So I've already done this just for sake of time. And I use a little uh, eyeshadow brush to get inside these kind of small parts. It just makes it a little easier. So that's ready to go, except for my other distress. Now this is gonna be what you see. You're gonna see this through here. This would be your book page, decorative paper, if that's what you choose, you know, whatever you want to see through there. In my case, I like to use this uh, vintage photo distress oxide to just kind of age that a little bit more. So I've used the darker around the edges because uh, my leather's really dark, but I don't want this inside as dark. So I'm just gonna see a little bit of that, hint of that, just to, kind of make it look a little aged in there. And the other thing too is if these don't line up when I put them together, I'm gonna see in there a little bit. And so I just wanna make sure they're not they're not white in case they show. Okay, so I'm gonna even do the same on this one because this top is gonna be open. I'm not so worried about the sides, but um, you are gonna see from the top. Okay, and then I already went ahead and glued my um, my gessoed paper on this, just again for sake of time. And I'm just gonna put a little on this too. So you can skip this step if that's not your style. So that's just goes with my, my kind of exotic vintage travel theme thing. Okay. Okay, so the next step that I wanna do then is in my tag, I put something inside to peek through when the card comes out. So you can do a little quote like I did, or on this one I did different. I just um, punched out a couple of hearts, uh, two different sizes. Uh, one is uh, one and seven sixteenths, and I don't know what this one is. It doesn't have the dimension on it, but just two different sizes, and I punched those out of my mixed media scraps that I had and just put a little heart in there. And that's the same thing I did on the card. So, you know, whatever goes with your style. Just a couple of ideas. It's easier to do that now than to do that after your window goes in because I can see exactly where I wanna place it. 
So I have one ready here. And this one, I just, you could have, maybe you have a sticker that you wanna put there or something. I just printed this off of my computer um, onto a, just a piece of copy paper. You could put it on book page if you want. Um, just whatever your imagination gets you. And then I'm gonna put it in my uh, sticker maker. And I just love this thing. It's a, a Xyron, X-Y-R-O-N. Um, it's the mini, create a sticker mini. It's, it makes them two and a half inches wide. They make this in a five inch, which I think I need to invest in because there's a lot of times I have something wider that I want to, to run through a sticker maker. And it, you can get the sticky cartridges in either repositionable or permanent. So, um, and I've used both. I'm actually out of the permanent, so this is repositionable, but it, it sticks fine for you know certain things. And you can, if it's gonna get wear and tear, you can glue it down. But see, by keeping the window out of this, I can get that put exactly where I want it. Okay, so you put your sticker in. Um, then I wanna put uh, my window in. And what I use, um, I have this little mead file folder thing, and it's just a thing that I use to store. I like to share organizational tips too as I go. This is just has all my coffee stained paper by what kind it is. Uh, it's just a place to keep it, and then it's also handy. I can keep all these little things that I, these things that I say, they're just little plastic baggies and things that you can use for windows so this way i just always know where they are so you just take a piece of that i've already cut one um to fit somewhere i hear it's clear now i can't see it i probably dropped it on the floor now where'd it go or in my bag okay well maybe i make another one so much for trying to save time. Huh. Oh, here's one. Here's one. Okay, so I've cut one. I just kind of eyeballed it to be a little smaller than my envelope. And you just want to make sure that your corners, because you've already cut these corners. So that's going to fit. And I'm just, I'm going to sew on this too. So I'm just going to really not even care how well I glue this. If you're not gonna sew yours, then you want to make sure it fits really well and that it's glued down really good so that when you put a card inside, in and out, it doesn't, it doesn't come apart. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick that down and let it dry. And I think I might have another one. At another stage, okay. So you would just put that window in there. And then the next thing that I do is I like to stitch around the inside of this uh, window and also stitch where my opening is gonna be on the front piece and on the back piece. So I'm gonna jump ahead to another one since I've got it started. So this one has my window in. I've done my stitching around the edge and I did it around just the top and I did it on the back side. So on mine, I keep the same thread in my machine all the time. Um, I use kind of a, some kind of gold. They vary, but it's usually some kind of tan or gold. I'm too lazy to take it out and put something that if I want it to match. So what I do is in this case, is I would just take my ink and I just darken that up. And it's, you might want the contrast, so you don't have to do this part either, but that this is what I use to do that. So that way it matches whatever I'm working on. And it's just easy, easier to do to me than to go dig through my thread and see what color I need, since it's the one I use the most. Now, if I wanna do a different color, a different project, you know, then I can do that, but and not everybody sews, so I've actually thought of a couple ideas. If you don't want to, um, maybe you don't have a sewing machine, you don't know how to sew, you don't want to do that, you can do, if you want that look, because I think it does help the tag to have the stitching look. It just makes it look more um, believable, I guess. What you can do is take just like a pin or a needle and poke holes where the stitches would be, and then use a pen and just 
make them with a pen. You can do that and that would look like it was sewn. Um, or you can do it by hand, sew it by hand, make the holes with the pin, and then just do like a slow stitching thing on it. That would be really cute too. So I have my stitching, my initial stitching that I need done, and now I want to put my little swivel window in. Now that was a thing that I took a couple of goes at because um, the first ones I did, when you think about it, I didn't want to attach it above my, I couldn't attach it above my opening because there's nothing to attach it to. And I want it to fit as a window, so it needs to fit. The only thing I have to attach it to is the cellophane. So that's not very sturdy. So what I came up with was a way to reinforce that. And I'm gonna show you on this one that I haven't sewn together, and then um, I'll show you how I made the little reinforcements. Cause you don't want them to show really, but they need to be functional. So if this makes sense, you're gonna use this little eyelet, right? As Cause it's gonna be a little durable thing, but I need it to spin. And I need, to, I need this to spin independent of the actual eyelet. So it needs to be kind of loose. And then I don't want any of it to spin on my cellophane because if I have it spinning against the friction, against the window, it's just gonna tear the window. So my idea was to make some little baby reinforcements to like um, washers on my window, okay? Window washers. So to make those, I am gonna get a piece of, I want a double thickness, so this is, just a piece that I had already put two together with glue stick, so it's pretty sturdy. And then I want two of them, and I want them to have their holes in the same place. So I went ahead and inked it just so they wouldn't be white, white. And then I'm gonna grab my three millimeter punch. I folded it in half because I need two. And I'm just gonna punch somewhere. And then I need it to stay to be small, but not, um, you know, it needs to be bigger than that three millimeter. So I had this little tiny circle punch. So I'm gonna use this size, this bigger one. And then I can kind of center, see where my hole is. And it's hard to push, because now I'm backwards, because I'm, I've got four layers here. Okay, so I have two little reinforcements there. And then what I want to do, I need it to be on this one. I want to put it as close to the top as I can. So I'm going to glue this one. And you want to let these dry before you uh, do, the, do your... before you do the, the eyelet on there. Here on this side. So I've just put one on each side. Trying not to get glue on my window. So if you can see that, I do have a little glue I need to clean off, but I have that reinforced now. So that's gonna be where I can put my, my eyelet and my hole. So I wanna make sure it's down low enough that I have room for my actual eyelet. Okay, so once that's there and dried, then I'm just gonna flip it around the back and that will be where I know I make my hole. Make sure everything is lined up. I don't think that is the right window for that one. That goes with this one, so I'm not gonna punch that. Okay, so I'm gonna jump ahead now to one that I've already done. 
and that would be this one, okay? So you can see, you know how to set an eyelet. I would just take this. I'm not gonna do it on that other one because it's not dry enough yet. But you just wanna, um, you know, put it through with the front here and then stack it on top of your window and then you're just gonna tap. Now you don't wanna do it too tight, like I said, so you really have to watch um, on this side so that it, it'll still swivel easy because this way I have no friction and it's just gonna keep working. Okay, so you have that attached and this, and then the next thing I needed to do was I need to make my slot for the, I've got different pieces going here. I think this one fits this one, yes, okay. So to make the little slot, I don't have a slot punch. So if you have one, then you could use that. You just want to make sure that you make it uh, long enough that your belt is going to fit through it. So I just kind of uh, measured mine. If you go to the back side, you can take a ruler. Find the center. And then make it... This is probably three quarters of an inch, maybe. Uh, I'll draw a line with a pen. And then I took my three millimeter punch again and just punch on either side of that line. And then with scissors, you can go get into that hole and cut through to the next hole and just do that twice. So it'll make your little slot. Okay, so I have all my parts, my stitching was done, and then all I need to do now is to glue it together around the edge, and I can use my little fine line applicator. And I'm gonna use this piece, because I can see where my stitching is, and if I drop my down, I'm gonna reinforce that on my machine, and so I'll be able to really get in and out of this without continuing to tear down the um, envelope and for me because I'm sewing this glue is not even necessary it just kind of helps keep it together while you're sewing it now if you sew if you have never sewed paper before um, and you're new to that what I do is I, I have a lot experience at sewing um, years and years of sewing but if you're brand new, don't be intimidated by it. I went and um, I don't use my good machine for this. I had went and bought just the cheapest uh, Singer sewing machine that had just a zigzag stitch, just a couple of stitches on it that could do a buttonhole, that kind of thing, at Walmart. Just buy a cheap one, because then you're not gonna worry about ruining it or anything like that using sewing on paper. So I would take this to my machine now and then just sew those three sides and then that part of my tag is finished. So if you aren't going to sew it, you need to glue it much better. I would clamp it with my little bulldog clamps and then uh, let it dry really good because you're gonna be going in and out of here. So I'm not gonna go sew this now just for sake of time, but it will end up looking like this. And then I think I did this one. I do wanna show this. When you sew on your sewing machine, it's paper. So you're punching through. Make sure that your stitches are between like three and four. You don't want them too close together because that just perforates paper. So you want them far enough like a basting kind of stitch. The other thing is that when it punches through, it's the needle's punching through and you see paper back here and it looks kind of tattered. So that's when I take my inking and get rid of all that. And then when that ink dries, it's just gonna totally blend in and you won't even see any of that. So that looks much better. Okay, so that's the tag. Now for the belt buckle part, I went ahead kind of and did one ahead too. So this is my strip. I've trimmed it a little bit. It really doesn't matter how long it is because it's it's just gonna you know loop around and hold on to something. So I have my strip, I've glued this one together already, and then I would ink my edges. Okay, we're gonna pretend I did that. Then to get that rounded um, so perfect, I used my corner punch again. And because this is only half an inch wide, when I use that middle one, 
and do both sides, it just rounded my edge perfectly. So it made my end of my belt, okay? So I would do that and then ink around all that. And then what I did was I took one, let's use this one, and I went around my, uh, with my sewing machine around the whole thing so it looks really like a belt. And then just with my three millimeter punch, I made three holes and you can eyeball them or, you know, make a pattern and just the distance doesn't really matter either. It's all kind of just whatever looks right. Okay, so I've just put some eyelets there. And then for this end for the buckle, I'll show you how I made a buckle. Um, and then I don't have one, I don't think, finished here. But you can see they're all just kind of wonky and hand done. So you might be able to find a buckle uh, to, to purchase or you can rob off one off of something you already have. But you can make them yourself too. And I have jewelry things, so you know I have those kind of tools. But you could actually just with like even bailing wire and uh, pliers make a buckle because there's only two pieces to it. So I used, um, just because I have it, I used um, 16 gauge, I think this is 16 gauge bronze wire, okay? So I'm gonna start with a clean end. And then I'm just using these little flat nose pliers to do this, but like I said, you could use, you could use, if this is the only kind you have, just go all the way to the bottom where it's wider and bend it over. So it's just, it looks like an L right now. Okay, and then I'm just using the width of my plier for the other side. You can make it whatever height you want it to be. I think every one I've made has been different. Okay, so now you have this shape, if you can see that. Now the only thing I need to know is that it's gonna fit the width of my belt. So I can just use this one since I don't have a buckle for it already. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball that right there. And that's gonna be my next bend. Okay, so now it looks like this. So, <clears throat> so before I go around that last bend, I just wanna make sure it fits and it does. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so then I'm gonna do the last little bend. And then it kind of meets in the middle there, so that's where I'll cut it. With these very dull cutters. Okay, so now I just have a little rectangle. And then where it meets in the middle, it's gonna just, you're, that's gonna be hidden by the belt anyway. So I have my little rectangle. You can leave it like that if you want, or you could hammer it. I like to hammer it a little bit just so it looks more like a real buckle. Without hammering your finger. Okay, just do. This is why my hands look trashed all the time. Because they've been working for many, many years. Okay. Now, the other little fun thing I liked to do is in a belt buckle, there's like a little indentation where this part lays, where it kind of cradles it. So to make that little indentation, I took my wire and I just laid it over the middle where I want the indentation and just hit it with my hammer. Oops. And it made a little, in and then flip it over just to flatten it back out. But it made a little notch there. Okay, and then I need to make my the other little part. So I I cleaned my end again, and I'm just using some little round nose, and I'm gonna just make the smallest little loop that I can with this really heavy wire. So it looks like that. And then I'm gonna put one end inside the hole, and I'm gonna kinda just bend it back a little bit. 
So this will be the top of my of that part. I don't even know what we call that, but that's the top of it. And then I don't know how long it needs to be, so I'm going to open that loop and I'm going to put it on my buckle. And it does have a top, so it's going to actually I don't think it matters. I don't know if I'm in the frame or not. Okay. This will help me to decide how long it needs to be. Now, you, I'm going to probably shorten it. I always like to make something bigger than it needs to be. You can take away, but you can't add. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball where that is and cut it off. Once you get it into your belt, you'll know exactly how big it needs to be. Oops, I do need this again. Okay, so... Now I want to, you know, in a belt, in a buckle, that end that cradles on the rest there, that's usually flatter. So I'm gonna take my hammer again. And flatten that out a little bit. And then the other thing it usually does is it kind of swoops over that a little bit so I'm just gonna kind of put a tiny little bend there so that it looks like the top of the that little catch instead of the bottom. And then I can see exactly, or at least closer, I'm gonna trim a little bit more off and I may need to trim it one more time. Oh, these cutters are just not my best ones. Okay, and then if you need to, if there's a burr on the end of that, you can just take a file, a nail file or anything will work, sandpaper, heavy sandpaper, and now you have a buckle. So you can see this one's shiny. My hands are filthy. This one's shiny. Um, I have liver of sulfur because I do jewelry. So when you drop it into that, it will come out, depending on how long you leave it, it'll come out having that aged bronze look like the little uh, eyelet. So that is my buckle. Now I have one. I thought I had one to show you how to put it in. And maybe I don't. Okay, we'll take this one. So in order to attach that buckle to my belt, I'm just folding it over a certain amount. Anything you want will work. It's not critical. Okay, and then I need to take that three millimeter punch again, and in that fold, I want to punch a hole. So I'm going to find kind of eyeball the center, and then I'm going to do it again right behind it because I want it kind of a longer, a longer hole. So I've punched it kind of twice. So it makes kind of that long, if you can see that, that long shape. Okay, so I fold it over, okay? Now, to put it on, there is a top and a bottom, so you kind of have to see, this is the top of my belt. So I want it to go this way. So I want to let that fall back, put my loop through, and then that little straight part has to come through that hole. Just like that. Okay. So now, I'm not gonna do this because I still need to age this, but I would just take this over to my sewing machine and just sew that back and forth, and that will attach it. If you're not gonna sew anything, you can also just make another hole with your punch and use one of these eyelets through there, and that will also attach your belt, your buckle to your belt, okay? But now that I have this in there, you can see how now I can tell exactly how long that needs to be because you want it to you want it to catch. Um, if it's too short, it won't work. It'll just fall through. So I can leave it how it is or trim a little bit more if I want, but it's pretty good. So that would be your finished belt. Now the only other thing you need to add is that other little piece. Where did a piece go that I can use? I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna make this now. I'm just gonna show you. So you'd fo fold this in half and glue that together so it's it's two-sided. And then you're gonna make a loop 
however big you need to, it to be for your, like this is too long, I would actually trim some of that off for this one. You just need it to overlap. And then I just glue that because you can't, uh, you can't sew it's too small. You could hand tack it up if you want, I suppose, but um, just glue it and then uh, ink the edges and then it just slides. And all that is, is the thing that you're gonna use when you buckle it to catch the end of your buckle. So that's it. And you can see this one's wider than this one. They're all different. I'm just eyeballing everything that I do, but it's um, that little piece. So we have our, our little tag. So like I said, I've made a few of these now. Um, just trying to figure out all the little parts and pieces and how they how they would work well. So I hope that wasn't too uh, intense. You could also then make a card. I did this after the fact, just kind of measure what will fit in there. And that could, again, be any design that you want it to be. So I hope that if you like that little project, that you give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if there was anything that was kind of confusing. And I will try to answer it. Um, in the comments and if it needs a little more show you know to explain something I'll do it at the beginning of the next video after I get the comment so um, I'll let you know where you could find that okay so I hope that was uh, a fun little project I need to get to working on that carpet bag idea I had and uh, enjoy the rest of your day now go make something bye